So I've been thinking a lot about videos about the business <clears throat> and things that I want to talk about. One of those things that I really want to talk about, because to me it's interesting, is why we closed our winery down. <clears throat> so there are things that you say, and then there's reality. So the marketing spiel for why we closed our winery down was that um, we wanted to focus more on the horse stuff. It's absolutely true. That part is true. But the part that we don't talk about is that there are some negative aspects that also informed our decision. Let me put these away and I'll tell you. So on this farm, we had, we had basically three businesses, technically four, but we'll go with three. One is the agritourism business. That's where we do uh, trail rides, wagon rides, and bicycle tours. The trail rides and wagon rides go out through the vineyards. It's beautiful. We tell you all about the area, the vineyards, um, and the growing practices. We have wonderful relationships with the uh, vineyard managers and owners who let us ride through there and who educate us about everything that they're doing. I've also been out here since the Earth's crust started to cool, so I have some uh, background working out there. <clears throat> So that's Red Mountain Trails. That's the mothership. That is where everything started as far as businesses on this farm. My husband and I started our winery in 2019, right before the pandemic. The pandemic wasn't a problem. If anything, the winery helped us weather the storm of the pandemic when we couldn't do anything else. For that, we were pretty grateful. People wanted to ride through the vineyards and then taste wine made from those vineyards that they had just visited and gotten all of this great information about. <clears throat> so we started the winery. We had some wonderful opportunities from neighbors who helped us and this community out here that's so great, or we never would have gotten it off of the ground. The winery was great. <clears throat> However, comma, insurance for wineries and insurance for a trail ride business are crazy. I would call them grueling and maybe a bit of a shit show. So the reason we have all of our businesses separated and not just Red Mountain Trails is because you have to, well, we have to separately insure each business. The winery could only be a winery. It could only be insured as a winery. Great. Second, second is Red Mountain Trails, the trail rides and stuff. So I can say we don't serve wine on our trail rides. We don't go to the tasting rooms on our trail rides. This is like the equivalent of a go-kart um, track outside of a strip mall that happens to have a pub in it. You know, the two are side by side, but never the twain shall meet. Insurance companies don't see it like that. <clears throat> so because I had the two, the winery did not like the exposure to the horse business and the horse insurance did not like the exposure to the wine business. So really insurance is what made the decision for us. We had to choose between keeping the horse business or the winery. The winery never sparked joy. And here's why. One, serving people freaks me out. Not service in general, but serving people alcohol freaks me out because the liability in Washington state is both on your business and personal if something happens. Not to mention the fact that I would be horrified if anyone were were hurt. Um, secondly, like I know myself, I'm a people pleaser. I If people ask for more wine, I wanna give it to them even though I know like, no, maybe that's enough. So um, I was really just relieved not to serve wine anymore. Also, thirdly, I think we're on number three. We always had to have it staffed. You always had to have somebody right there when you were serving wine, totally fine. But staffing wise, it was a thing. So that's three, fourthly, Fourthly is that wine grape harvest is always 
September, October, which is crazy busy for trail rides and wagon rides. Like, whew, bonkers, crazy town. I call it hand solo season because that's when everybody comes out with their flannel shirt, their black vest, and their knee high boots, looking like a bunch of little hand solos. I'm not mad. I have that same outfit. I look forward to busting it out every year. I don't care if it's a 15 year old trend. I'm all in. But everybody thinks or feels that cozy vibe and they want to go for a wagon ride and sit around the campfire in the fall. Great. Love it. But that's also when the grapes are being harvested and we just get called. We get a call and they say, your grapes are ready. Pick them up. And then I have to contact the winemaker and say, all right, you've got a load of grapes coming in. Where do you want them? And he <clears throat> could say, can you wait a day? Because I'm already like busy. Or um, can you bring them in a minute? <laughs> so you kind of have to, even though I'm not all in on the winemaking process, it still is something where you have to either staff or drop everything and do yourself. And the timing was rough. So those are really the, the four reasons why we quit the winery. Um, there's also some notes out there, or I guess you would say some industry reports that say that, you know, wine sales are down in terms of people buying uh, less expensive bottles of wine in the 15 to $20 price range which buying grapes on Red Mountain and then trying to sell that wine for 15 to 20 dollars a bottle that's not even feasible and um, secondly just kind of a downward trend in people drinking I think this is all anecdotal this is what I've noticed it's not uh, you know don't take my word for it it's just something that I've observed so I always thought of the winery as another product line. It wasn't like, this is my life's work. This is my craft and my art. It was always uh, a great opportunity to add a product line to what we already offered. And I think it's really tough in business, uh, especially when you start or when you're a small business or when you have something that's as romantic as wine, to step back and just look at it as a business. It's wine. It's just a product line. That's all. It's a product line that I wasn't in love with and that wasn't the income didn't offset the mental and emotional cost as well as the, the cost to make wine. Totally fine. The decision was super easy for us when it came time to renew the insurance. We just couldn't find any insurance that was uh, feasible. And we could have tried to sell more wine, but we knew that would take resources away from doing what we really love, which is the tours. So why do it? And we're surrounded by some of the best wineries in the world, several tasting rooms that are world-class. Um, we have, you know, USA Today's Tasting Room of the Year. We have award-winning winemakers. We have some of the most prestigious wine grape vineyards in the country right here. And what we offered was great wine, but we weren't filling a gap. We weren't putting something out there that nobody could find anywhere else. So it was easy to say, okay, we're not doing a disservice to our customers by not selling wine anymore. We're just removing that product line. There's tasting rooms seconds away that our guests can visit. I can see Frechette Winery from here and I can see Kiona Winery from here. I can see Hedges from here, Hamilton Cellars, Hightower, Avenia, you know, uh, Cooper, who am I forgetting? Monte Scarlato, Upchurch. Those are all with, I can see those. Um, I used to call them stumbling distance away, but that's not a great, uh, you know, way to, to put it. So anyway, we, we really weren't taking anything away by getting rid of the, the wine as a product line. And the final thing that really confirmed that decision was when I told staff and I just said, look, 
we're not doing wine anymore. And I mean, there was like a collective cheer. <laughs> Everybody was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's just so much and we're really here to ride. So whenever I would post positions for the winery, we would need staff to work in the wine tasting barn and stuff. And they always applied with the hope of working with the horses. So it was really difficult to compete with ourselves even. By listening to our staff, our guests, and our own hearts, it really made the decision pretty easy to close the winery down. And we're so excited though about what this opens up for us in terms of what we're doing. We'll always cherish the memories we've made with the winery and we're so grateful for all of the support from our wine loving community. And we can't wait to share what's next on our farm with you all. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any updates. Cheers! <laughs>